Hi there, my name is Pierre Skatsis and today we're going to talk about the add and the add async method of entity framework. Similar with the save method, the add has also an async overload. So let's talk about why it exists and if you should use it. When you use the save async instead of the save, we do it so that we can free a thread and our app can service another request while we process the current one. So we should always use a sync, right? Well, no, let's go to our example. I have a simple API controller with two entities, a customer with just an ID and a full name, and a product with an ID and a description, and let me make that bigger. And uh, I have a persistence folder, which uh, in here I have my app DB context, and we have uh, two DB sets, the DB set of customer and the DB set of product, some uh, configuration about the customer and the product, and two controllers, a product controller in which uh, we can uh, create a product and the customer controller in which we can create a customer. So let's start with the customer and I'll put a breakpoint in here. Also, let me tell you that um, I have registered my DB context and I have uh, enabled uh, sensitive data logging so we can see what's going on in the database side of things. So with that out of the way, let's debug our application and let's put a breakpoint just before we add the customer to our DB set. And I'll open Postman, I'll create a customer with the name Spears Katsios, I'll hit send and we hit our breakpoint. Let's also have the console in here so we can see what's going on. I'll step over and then I will save my customer. And as you can see, when I saved it, we made the call to the database and we tell it to insert uh, that customer in the customer's table. So let's hit continue. And uh, we generally use a synchronous code when we make IO calls, which they can take a while to complete. Let's send another request with the same name, it doesn't matter. And uh, as you previously saw, and we can see it better now, when uh, we add the customer to the DB set, we don't make uh, any call to the database. All entity framework does is start tracking the entity. So using the async overload won't uh, benefit uh, your app in any way and it uh, might slow it down. So you shouldn't really use uh, the add async uh, method instead of the add. So why the add async exists in the first place? Well, sometimes you should use it. Let's go to share configurations. In my customer configuration, I have only set the ID to be the key, but in my product configuration, I have set the ID to be the key, but uh, I also set it to generate the value on add using high, low and the sequence. Now, high, low, it's outside of the scope of this video, but uh, what uh, this uh, code will do it uh, will actually generate the ID not by the default way but it will use a sequence and if we actually go to our migrations it uh, created a sequence and the current bytes then what that means is that uh, we will have a sequence in our database and each time it will give us um, a number bigger by 10 from the previous one so the first time we will call that it will give us 1, then 11, then 21, then 31, etc. And uh, as you can see, I have also called the value generated on add. So let's uh, see what this does. Let's go to our product controller. And as you can see in here, I use the add async method. Let's put a breakpoint and let's see why I do that. And I will make a call to create a product. Okay, I'll hit send. With our breakpoint, let's go to our console and let's see what will happen when I step over that add async method. I'll hit step over. And as you can see, we actually did make a call to our database. We made the call to get the next value from our sequence. And if I go to my product, as you can see, it has an ID of one, although we haven't saved any changes yet. So now we will make a call to the database whenever we add a product to the DB set. Well, not every time because how high low works with EF, but you get the point. The async overload exists because sometimes, based on how you have configured entity framework, it will make a call to the database when adding to the entity. In most cases, that's not the case, but sometimes it is, and uh, then 
you should actually use the add async method. So to summarize, the add async is there because sometimes based on how you configure entity framework and based on your needs of uh, your application, maybe uh, you want to make a call to the database when adding an entity to the DB send. And in that case, you should use the add async because you make an IO call. But in most cases, you won't. So when you haven't configured entity framework to make a call to the database when uh, you're adding an entity to the DB set, so in most scenarios, I would uh, speculate, you shouldn't use the async overload, but just the add method. So that was it for this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a nice one.